cars that I got. What is good, everyone? And welcome back to another edition, the first edition in a long time of Talk Your Shit with Trap. And Talk Your Shit with Trap is our interview video segment stuff where we sit down with entrepreneurs, artists, things like people like that and talk about their, you know, their ventures and things they got going on in their life and stuff like that, you know, get to know them a little better. And on this episode of Talk Your Shit with Trap, we have a returning, the family, the homie, the brother, Mr. Underrated Visuals himself, Daryl Rogers Jr. How are you doing, my guy? Good to have you back. Hey. Good on, bro. What's up, fellas? How y'all doing? Shout out that boy, Daryl. Shout out Underrated Visuals. Shout yes, out, sir. shout out. And then, of course, we got my two phenomenal co-hosts, my brothers, Kenny the Great and Londo with us today. Of course, we got them with us today. And, um, you know, we got a couple things to talk about you know what i mean you're gonna catch up with you it's been a while since we did one of these with you since the last time you know what i mean things have been different things have changed progression has been made and everything like that so we're gonna get into that and uh first let's talk about with progression you actually have a, a showcase coming up with an event um the third vision unlimited volume three event brought to you by of course the homies them boys, Christopher Jenkins and CJ McLendon, you have a showcase with them coming up next Friday, July 15th. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about that. Uh, let's talk about, first off, how did that come together? Um, <clears throat> well, it, it kind of came out the blue, you know, like uh, the second one I went to, that's when I first met CJ and uh, we was just talking, kicking it. And uh, he was saying something like, oh man, you know, the third one going to be about y'all. I'm like, y'all, I don't know what he was talking about at, at the time. And then, uh, God dang, Chris, Chris DM me and like, he offered, he was like, Hey man, you want to be a part of the showcase? And I was like, yeah. So he was like, you was one of my first picks. So that's how everything came together. Started printing out my pictures, getting the frames and stuff ready for next Friday. So that's how everything really came together. So what you're saying that, you know, you had to print out everything and everything. So what all comes into getting ready for a showcase? Oh, uh, money. <laughs> yeah. Bro, them frames, bro. You got to catch Hobby Lobby when they got it. Got them frames on sale, bro. Boy, just like canvases. Them bitches are expensive, boy. Like, yeah. for real. I got, I got three frames for like $80. I was like three frames. Without a sale, it's like one hundred and fifty dollars, bro. Right, that's crazy. Yeah, that's or crazy. more. And then you know you gotta pick certain pitches that you feel like someone is gonna resonate with, bro. Right. I, I take so many pitches, bro. I had I was sending Chris some pitches like, "Hey, bro, what you think about this for the theme?" He's like, uh, "I don't like that." Then so I is, had, it, so um, it is. Is it like a theme thing, or is it just like you just? <laughs> It's like a street photography kind of theme. It's like okay. a urban area kind of theme. Okay. And yeah, I know you got a lot of pictures like that. You you done did it, a lot of photos and stuff for that. Um, let's pass it to you know I don't want to take over too much. So let's pass it to Kenny Lando. You got any questions? Um, <laughs> about this. If event? you can say who are the other artists that are gonna be um displayed besides Chris and C Chris, you and CJ. Uh. What's her name? Uh, is it Alexandra on Facebook? I forget. I think that's her name. That's the only one I know. Uh, I don't know who the other people are, but I know it's just us four because I met her at the second showcase. Okay. That's the only person I know, but I don't know the other uh, other people that's going to be in the showcase. So. So how do you and, prepare? Um, you just, and like you're fairly, I don't want to say new, but like you know what I'm saying you, you're fairly new in the in the photography game. Like, what do you feel like you bring to it that the next photographer won't exactly bring? Like, what can we expect like to be the underrated visuals like signature, or do you feel like you have a signature? Uh. Like it can be it can be an aesthetic. It can be a you know what I'm saying how you take pictures, what you like to take pictures of, just something that sets you apart. Uh, I I think what sets me apart is uh my editing skills. I would say, cause my my 
how I play with colors is totally different from what other photographers would do. Like, right. you, you can tell when, when a nigga ain't touch a picture, bro. Right. <laughs> oh, right. Can. oh, can we? Oh, like, can we tell? Like, you can tell, bro. A nigga take a picture Wait and be like, hey, here you go. Like, nigga, you ain't touch my picture, bro. Right. <laughs> like, no, no route. You can tell, man. Like, so I, I think how the style of mixing digital and film would make me different. Cause you know, people just stick with one lane and I feel like I could be the best in both lanes. Yeah, so, people like stencils nowadays, you know? All yeah. right, all right. <laughs> so you wanna, this ain't that. But um, going, you know, from the last time when we talked and we did your first interview with us, uh, you know, you were kind of just in the beginning of starting and you know, your beginning phase of life with the photography game. From yeah. then to now, you know, you definitely have made a lot of progression. I've seen it, you know, and everything. How do you feel things have changed? Like, do you feel like your mindset, people around you, things of all that? Like, how has things changed since the last time we spoke? Um, For you personally? I, I've gained more supporters. I've been booked more. Uh, I've been networking more, too. I, I got a surprise to tell y'all also what happened to me yesterday, like. It's crazy how shit come full fold. Right. Like, come on, bro. It's crazy, but I, I have to tell you, bro. I don't want to say it because I don't want to block my blessing, but I'm nah, saying yeah, it. No, yeah, facts, facts. I mean, so, you don't got, I understand that. You don't got to say it. Okay, we can talk about, all, you know, around off record type shit. But, you know, because in the beginning, I know you was talking about, like, it seemed like, it seemed like you could tell, it's just the progression, like I said, is just way different. You know, you can, you've can you been doing more interviews. Like you said, you've been getting more bookings and more people supporting you. Do you feel the, do you feel like the more supporters you guys are more because of what you're doing or are they, you think they're really seeing the greatness in it all? Or do you feel like it's more fake love with it? No, I don't, I don't think uh, it's fake love in it at all. I think it's, um, they seeing what I can do and they want to support it. Um, like when when Nexus shout out to Voices Radio when she when she hit me out the blue with the radio invitation I was I was ecstatic bro I was happy because I'm like folks seeing me and like her that she was seeing my stuff pop up on her timeline and she didn't even know who I was right it was cool like, you know seeing my stuff being shared seeing stuff on Instagram Facebook so it it was it was pretty a surreal moment. Like seeing people support me and that shit, that shit cool, bro. So do you think the saying of strangers will get you more out there than your friends and family? Has that been more yeah. real for you, for you Facts. personally? Facts, yeah. You have seen that more? Yeah, yeah, like I could go to a skate park and I could be sitting there with my camera, bro. And people are just, hey, man, you're a photographer. Hey, um, can I see some of your work? Then I show it to them like, man. Can I book you for for my wedding, or can I book you for my six my sixtieth birthday? Like some, so it's it's crazy how stuff worked like that, bro. And then being a photographer, I'm pretty sure that shit get you in some rooms you never thought you'd be in, type shit. Yeah, man. I I, I just met I just met a dude uh, a couple weeks ago that's in the music industry. That's that's locked in with certain people. And like, he, I'm trying to, the end goal is to get, become a sports photographer, right? Right. Okay. And he knows people that's in that area because he does photography also. So uh, we just making a portfolio right now and we're going to send it to Atlanta Hawks and, you know, trying to get hired out there, do that full time. So oh, see, that's good. That's, that's yeah. good as fuck, bro. So when it comes to um, let's, uh, collaborating, uh, so are you willing to still collaborate with, like, you know, someone who was in your spot earlier this year, last year, you know, when you first started, are you willing to still, like, try to take somebody and, you know, somebody was somebody came up to you and was like, hey, big bro, you know, I'm trying to get to where you are. Can you not can you mentor me in some shit? You know what I mean? How you feel about that? Or you on, you, you know, you feel like you had a certain level with this shit. No, nah, man, I'm still a rookie, man. I'm still a rookie, bro. If, if somebody still want to collab with me, bro, 
I'm I'm all for it, bro. I ain't going to shun nobody away because one day you might be better than me. And I might, for that same favor, be like, hey, man, you know, let's collab. And then I shun you away. Like, nigga, man, get out of my face. So you never know how stuff works. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that happens a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, but, you know, life. Um, well, you know, man, so how is the photo process of picking out your photos been going, though? Back to the event. And you got you, you think you're ready or you still got some preparing to do for the uh, for the showcase? I'm ready. I just got to get some more frames, bro. Yeah. I, I, I might. I don't know. I'm, I might have different size frames, you know. So yeah. Yeah, I already got my 10 pictures laid out. I just got to buy some more frames and I'll be done. Okay. Okay. So let's talk. Uh, let's talk about you personally, bro. You know, I, you know, you always posting books, and you know, you want to get. You're getting, you know, reading all this stuff a lot and stuff. So, what made you want to get more into that side of, you know, reading and get into the earth and all that stuff? Oh, dang, that's a. That's a good. into the earth. Boy, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> like, I be seeing, bro. You know, posting all the stuff. You know, with the herbs bro. and things, and you know, you know, spiritual. You know. Ah. It ain't even me, bro. It's 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 my girlfriend, bro, who I call my wife. So right. it, it ain't even me. It's her putting me on stuff. I put her on stuff. And bro, if sorry to cut you off there, bro. The niggas gotta understand, bro. If if your mate not doing that, if they not bring out the best of you, bro, then no matter how much you like that nigga or that bitch, you gotta get them from around you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. That's, you that's need somebody that's gonna, that's gonna like, pull you up and not just you know, tear right. you down, you know, it's all about the whole point of a relationship is growth and, you know, building up and supposed to be trying to find a better you and they supposed to be, you supposed to help them find a better them type shit, you know what I mean? So hey. definitely, definitely. If, so hey. if she's doing that, she's doing her job, you know what I mean? She's helping you become a better you, so. And yeah, yeah, she got my nigga, she got my nigga winning, my nigga rocking crystal. That's all I'm saying, bro. reading, doing all that, you know Yeah, I mean? shout out to Nexus, yo, shout out to Nexus. You know, shout out, shout out. So do you feel like um your mind frame is different with this shit? Like when you uh with what you're doing more reading and getting into the crystals and stuff, do you feel like more I, I guess zen or relaxed and shit? Like do you feel more happy? I used to have a horrible attitude, bro. Mm. I'm talking about I'm talking about cussing at niggas. Like people don't even want to be around me no more, bro. Like like when I when I was acting crazy back then, but like Bro, you can I can look at you like you stupid, bro. You say something crazy to me, bro. Right. Like I don't all that negative stuff, bro. I don't want to hear. If you coming yeah. to me, I spin on somebody. I don't want to hear that shit. Bro. It's like, hey, I'm all about happiness, peace. Yeah, man. Hear that shit, man. So you know, um, you know, we know you behind the scenes and everything, and um, you had an injury recently, and you, you're uh, yeah. that. I know that really affected your journey with the photography you know fucking you up with getting around you know things of that nature how's that how's that been you better now you hey, good? it really didn't though bro because bro was pulling up yeah no and he was still doing shit. Interview. And that's the crazy thing bro he was, was still... doing photography like right. literally bro i did an interview with nexus bro pulled up with the what's the little shit when you put your knee on it and you scoot yeah. around like i swear to god bro yeah so so did that do you feel like that held you back in you or you feel like that just made the uh-huh. grind the passion stronger to get right when, when it first happened, bro, I was so down on myself. Bro. I'm like, man, I was questioning God, bro. I was, bro, I was like pissed, bro. God, bro, I'm at, I'm at the peak where I'm finna blow. Like, I'm doing good, bro. And then, boom, right, shit just stopped. I don't, I don't know if God wanted me to chill because I, I really, I really wasn't resting like that. Right, go twenty four seven, but um. That's that's around the time I really started picking up reading books, journaling, all that kind of stuff, bro. When that when I tore my Achilles, but like um, I was talking to a good friend of mine, he was like, "Bro, you can still go take pictures. Are you on crutches?" I'm like, "Nigga, how, I'm like, how I'm gonna do that? I still mm. got a whole camera, nigga. I might mess around and fall." But when he bought a scooter, bro, once I got that scooter, bro, I was still on go, bro. I was pulling up on folks, doing events, doing prom pictures. Bro. I was, yeah. I was, I was, I was still, bro. So, I, so like everywhere, everywhere that they gonna pop up with the school. Yeah. No 
So, so what made you get out of that funk? Because, and then you write, it does, and that might have been God's way of telling you to chill out for a little, you know, get a little break because it is good to take a break from things like this because then you, you know, you get stressed out, even with work in general, you know what I mean? You start getting stressed out and everything. Life is hard as it is. So I get that. But like, was there anybody in your life, like your girl, family that helped you get out of that funk as well? Or is yeah. this like, yeah? Yeah, my mom, my mom and, uh, and my girlfriend Alexis, they, they helped me a lot. Cause I I was staying in the house, blow like I'll be in my room, lights lights out, just blow mad, and like you know that that type of shit get you back in depression, bro. Right. Yeah. And I was about to slip back into that, so they they got me out of the room, bro. Talked to me, and got me back right. So I appreciate them. So shout out to Ma Dukes and Alexis, man. Shout out to y'all, and shout out to Tevin too. Cause uh, Tevin, he talked to me a lot about it. Yeah, shout so, out to them. Shout out to them. Shout out to, it's good to have good people like that in your life, bro. And um, so you know, let's move on to some current event questions. You know what I mean? Let's talk about what's going on in the world. You know, see what your thoughts and opinions are on this. You know what I mean? So you know, Roe versus Wade got overturned like a week or two ago, I think it was. Um, we talked about this on the podcast, new podcast out, Return of the Trap, new episode out right now. Go check that out. Um. So what are your thoughts on that, on the overturn of Roe versus Wade? Is that about the uh, abortion thing? Yeah, yeah. Like, like they can't do that no Yeah, more? yeah, it's like in certain places, they, it's illegal now. And they need to let them folks do that, man. Right. Some, some folks ain't ready for that. Nah, I facts. can speak for experience, bro. I, I wasn't ready for it. The person I was messing with wasn't ready for it. We was just fresh out of high school, bro. And, like, we went through that, bro. So it, it's something I look back at now that I regret, you know, because right, right now, look, my little baby probably be six years old right now. But, right. But, Damn, bro. But, but, but it's yeah. like, you know, but the thing is, yeah, you look back at those times, but like you said, you knew you wasn't ready. And at that time, who knows if you would, if that would have happened, things would have been different now. You know what I mean? Because you would have been on some father shit, you know, and fatherhood is great, you know what I mean? But you you might have not had time to even, this probably would never happen. Like you said, you your baby would have been like six years old right now. So who would have yeah. even known if you would have been on some, I want to do photography, you know what I mean? You might just want to have been a family man then, you know, so. It's it's crazy because a baby can push you, bro. Right, so no, I, that's facts. Higher things that you didn't think you could get to, though. Yeah. yeah. I, I know a lot of niggas that had kids and that shit just... Yeah, it helped them. Yeah, it definitely, it, it definitely for myself, it definitely has made me think about life differently with a lot of shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it does make you do that. Like, okay, I got to do this shit perfect, almost perfect to, you know, so they can be good in the end of it all. You know what I mean? So mm. I definitely understand that. Um, So also sticking with the topic of Roe versus Wade, um, as men, you know, we're all men. Do you feel like, because some people don't feel like men should talk about this topic. You know what I mean? But then when I talk to my spouse, you are, like, bro, that logic is so fucking dumb, though, because it's like women aren't asexual. They can't have babies by themselves. No, I know so, that's facts. I'm like, but, you know, and it's some saying a woman like I feel like as long as they ain't saying, oh, oh, uh, she got like fucked up. She trying to kill her baby. That hold up. Like as long as he ain't on that type of time, I feel like niggas should be able to speak on it. Okay. How many issues that got shit to do with women they speak on daily? You know what I'm saying? No, nah, that's facts. But man's opinion, the man the man's opinion is is mansplaining everything. So we we like you said the other day, we win, we lose. It's a lose lose. Can't can't say Honestly, anything. Right. So how how do you, Daryl, personally feel about that? Do you feel like we should be able to speak up on this? Like we should speak up on this because it does affect all of us. Really, it affects the women a lot don't get me wrong because their bodies and they have to go through this you know what i mean yeah. and but do you feel like we should have an opinion on this as men should we, we be involved of course we the father bro right that's what i'm saying like people people keep forgetting that part like all this shit start with sperm you know what i'm saying like yeah, everything start with me at the end of the day at the end of the day <laughs> so I, I i think i should have a big say so you know, right. 
All right, we're gonna move on to another topic. So uh, I'm pretty. I, I know we've talked about this before, and I'm pretty sure you done talked about this with other people. Um, the Brittany Griner situation. Uh, how do you? So you know, it, it was a post going around that, that. Well, her coach said that LeBron, if it was LeBron, he would have been out by now. So, Hell yeah. So what do you you think? So you think your thoughts on that? Hell yeah. yeah. If that was if that was Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Steph Curry, they wouldn't Steph have been Steph. there. <laughs> them niggas, them niggas would have got out. The, the bro, it wouldn't even hit the news. <laughs> it definitely would. <laughs> it wouldn't even hit the news. They'd have swept that shit under the rug, like like Lavar Lavar Ball or something, for example. When when he got messed up over there in China, and that nigga was stealing. Yes. Yeah. And and bro, Lavar went and talked to Trump, and Trump went and got that boy. Like, I think it's a sexist thing, bro. That's how I feel I about even, it. Bro, I don't even think it's sexist. I just feel like, for one, people are neglecting to realize she, you played in Russia during a war. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then, on top of that, like, everybody know how, how like, how WNBA players been getting treated? Like, not even on no, like, on some domestic shit. So, internationally, come on. Then, she is known for being anti-American. She say anti-American shit all the time. So now you want to crawl to us and you want somebody to bail you out when you're oh. always talking about how America that, is corrupt and all that shit. Now that you like, say that, you, you, think, you think that Russia's trying to flip her to their side since mm. she's nah. already anti-American? I feel like Russia trying to flip her. I feel like Russia feel like, okay, you're an American. You're famous. You feel like yeah. you're above the law because you was about to take this oil on our plane. We about yeah. to show you you're not above the law. I feel like I that's think, what it's about. And they're going to make an example out of her, bro. Exactly. They're trying mm. to make an example like, y'all Americans not going to come over here and do what y'all want and then just fly out and leave the country whatever y'all and want. Then, like, and then give Ukraine billions of dollars to fight us and then we're just going to be like, yeah, I'm one of your people back. Mm. Thank you. I think they just destroyed their economy. And look, <laughs> and Russia's so crazy because Russia is like, they really want us to swap like war criminals for Britney Griner. Nobody's gonna do that. Right. Like nobody is gonna send you fucking a, a arms dealer for Britney Griner. Like, come on. Right. Like, granted, granted, we all want her out, but at the same time, she fucked up. No, right. We yeah. gotta be realistic. Exactly. Americans cannot go overseas acting <clears throat> like we're gonna be immune to fucking laws like it's over here. Thank like, you. nigga. People have stricter laws outside of America. Yes, America is on some bullshit, and we do have crazy laws, but they're even wilder overseas. Basically. And you should know, Russia, you're in Europe. All black people know to tread lightly over there. Yeah, exactly. I'm just saying. Thank you. You're acting like she's fucking white, huh? Bro, you can't go over there fucking around, bro. You said what? And then, y'all, uh, I hate to be this guy, but let's also address the elephant in the room. Vladimir Putin, them, them boys are heavy, homo like, them, them boys are homophobes. Yeah. You yeah. are a known, mm. um, you're mm. a known lesbian woman. <laughs> mm. You know what I'm saying? That likes to dress on the male side. Like, you're known to be that. I, I, thought, I, thought like she, that. I thought she transitioned. That's why I was like, I didn't know. Well, we don't That's, know. We ain't gonna get into that. That ain't none of listen, my Listen, I've seen her with her shirt off, so I don't think she just has a shirt off and she got you know what I mean? Women I mean, I agree with you saying, but hey, this ain't about that. This ain't about Bruh. that. Daryl, back to you. <laughs> On to that, because this is going to be a whole nother podcast. On to another question. So, on another um, sentencing news that we talked about recently, R. Kelly got 30 years. Um, uh -huh. uh, what you feel about that happening? Do you feel like he should have got more? you feel like that's good enough? And also, I don't know if you've seen the transcript of the mom and daughter text thread of them texting um, uh, her basically saying that R. Kelly is basically going to be her son-in-law. Basically, her son-in-law is older than her. That's what she, the mom, was saying to the daughter, and that they going the daughter and her going to have babies. And then they said, and then the court hid this until the when shit was, was over. This? When was this? When did that happen? No, this I, this just came out. Like, no, when did that happen? When did yeah, they? Like, when did the conversation happen? Right. Oh, I, I don't know. I got to. Because if he was doing that and. In the late tens, that's sick, bro. Yeah, that's <laughs> that sick. Is sick. 
But yes, and then they said there's more. There was more. Um, I seen some yesterday after we did the show that there's more messages like that. Like there was more for from different parents. There like there's more like, like that. Bro. So it's like that doesn't you mean let them out. It, bro. That doesn't mean let them out. Bro, you got to think about it. It's like I'm not saying all, but in most of the situations, bro, them young girls ain't think R. Kelly was attractive. Right. Their parents was coursing them into mm-hmm. that. Like, hey, girl, that's R. Kelly. You know, you can change your family. Right. Like, come on. So, what's your thoughts he's, on this record deal? He's still sick for one, though. Right. Dude. Oh, what's yeah, your, yeah. He, that doesn't that doesn't absolve him of the nasty shit he did. Right. Because so that doesn't mean just because they did it don't mean you have to be like, yeah, I'll I'll perp. Right. I'll, sure. I'll, I'll take, sure. Yeah, I'll take part in it. Yeah, definitely. This thing was watching neighbors, like the neighbors' kids type shit. They said, like, yeah, that's wild. But Daryl, so what you think about all that, bro? Yeah, uh, yeah, he got thirty, but them damn parents need to get thirty too. Yeah, right. yeah, most definitely, and the managers and the fucking Isn't people that work for him because the they all need his, to ex, his ex-wife needs the judge needs, needs to pull that <laughs> Oprah card. Oh, yeah, snitching, but you you knew it, you knew about yeah, it. She, she knew it the all. Judge need to pull that Oprah card. You get thirty years. You get thirty, you get 30 years. years. Yeah, right. all, I think all of them need, but I don't oh, you, know. It. Oh, you thought I forgot oh, you in the back? 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> so I wonder when they made that docu-series when everybody was talking, I wonder if that got everybody out of it. I, I, them basically snitching that, was just, that would implicate be, them more I'm going to be anything. honest, bro. Just like I said on the live when we was talking about it, CJ, that's how I honestly feel. I feel like the whole movie was to make the parents seem more human. Because think about it. Mm, these texts would have just came out and everybody just found out about these text messages. People wanted to be like, oh, so y'all was selling y'all kids? Oh, y'all months. But my thing. But the but the show, it gave them time to like interview and show emotion and stuff right. like that. So that's the people, whole point of why they do it. any documentary, just to get right, that. Exactly. They that only did sympathy, it R. that victim, Lockdown. that victim factor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, man. You know, uh, you know, Daryl. Let, uh, wait, first, let's hand the floor over to my co of course. Y'all got any more questions for Daryl? Yeah, uh, how do you feel about Eric Holder? Who? Uh, that's Nipsey's killer. Yeah, how do you feel about he Eric got, He got uh, guilty on first degree. That nigga needed a death sentence, bro. Thank you. That Thank nigga you. took his favorite rapper away from me, bro. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, that man, no remorse. Right. That nigga you need to get the death penalty, bro. How you take? And then for him to be from that community, and you take the biggest person ever from that community, like that's crazy. You took Nip, you took Nip away from everybody, bro. The man just had a son. Come on, like come on, man. Oh, oh yeah. And then how you feel about the CERN with the with the. With the uh, energy, he loved talking about. I, I wasn't gonna do it. I wasn't gonna do it, but it just hit my head. What, he man? loves talking about the portals. What you think about that portals, man? You think they bringing in demons? Man, you know they bring You know they bring different, different dimensions, different people coming in here, man. You no, know? <laughs> niggas got alternate. Niggas got doppelgangers. We got yeah. doppelgangers out here now. That would be they wild be- as fuck, bro. Girl, bro. Looking on the street, see somebody look like your ass. What, what the hell y'all gonna do? Man, I'm gonna yeah. run. Uh, it, ain't, it ain't shit you can do for real. Them well, there's, actually, there's actually people like that. No, nah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I remember when I was young, we was at a skating ring, and my cousin was there. And you know, Justin Miles, that nigga Justin had a doppelganger at the fucking <laughs> fucking <laughs> skating ring. Me and Jay Reed was like, bro, you look just like this nigga. That's like, it was sick. Oh. Like, <laughs> my uncle had some explaining to do or something. I'm so glad that ain't never happened to me, bro. Because I don't know. Like, why does I Bow? Why right. does Bow Wow and Little Mama look the, alike? Are they twins? Like, I don't. That's get crazy. Are they the same yeah. person? Niggas, are they the same person? Niggas. <laughs> Nigga say, do, 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 like, bro. what the hell? What did what Bow Wow Hannah Montana? Nigga be putting a wig on and think he Little Mama. But she was like Glorilla. Oh, this nigga. She Gorilla does. got that her teeth fixed after she got that bag. That's that's you know that's dope. She can rap. Too, I don't right? care. I don't care what teeth she get fixed. Who she signed to? That bitch still ugly. I'm sorry. That's top five ugliest women I've seen in life. God. That whole video was <laughs> top five ugliest. I'm like Jesus Christ. This is a bad this, video. Nigga said this is a bad video. Fuck. Uh, they gotta think we hate black women. I'm about to say it does not do that. They go, <laughs> I, I ain't got nothing to say about that. 
But um, I have wait, 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 I got a question. What would y'all do if y'all was a bit? If y'all had a billion dollars, what would y'all do? What's the first thing? Dollars. Not dead ass. I would get. I would. I, I already said this before. If I won the lottery. New I, world order. I would give. I would give all my niggas a mill so they can do what the fuck they want to do with it. New You're world not the lottery and mill, winning a billion. No, I know. I'm saying if this was like that type of situation, if I just had well, if I just had a billion out of nowhere, I would give my niggas a mil, and then and then that's cheap. Pe- that's cheap out. as fuck. A million dollars, you got nigga. Feel- you you better you. That's a million you didn't have yesterday. <laughs> niggas better be. Nigga, you got fuck. way more than that. <laughs> nigga, you could give us all five million each. Oh well, be- yeah, a billion out of a billion. Yeah, I could do more, but I'm thinking like. Lottery terms. If I only had like three hundred mil or some shit like that, I still probably get like two, three mil to everybody. Really, billion. but this nigga Elon Musk is out here fucking all his employees. That's what that billion. That, that nigga that got nigga. twins on the way. Nigga, oh fuck. Nigga, oh, it's not. They already born. They're oh, born oh like- shit. But and then you got this nigga <laughs> Vince McMahon giving twelve million in hush money to bitches. Oh, the how do you feel about that, CJ? That's your favorite. This, this, That's your favorite. Man, listen, I was gonna talk about this on the pod yesterday. This ain't this ain't about me though. So, <laughs> Daryl, before we get up bro, out of here, bro, we appreciate you being here. Before we get out of here, though, what you got coming up besides the showcase and everything? What else you got coming? You got anything else coming up? Yeah, man, I'm gonna I'm go ahead and tell y'all, man. Yesterday, uh, when I was out there at the Battle of the South, I talked to a news reporter and uh, I gave her my information and everything to be a sports photographer for like all high school games, college games. So, I'm trying to get plugged in with that. Yeah, that's hard. Let's that's dope, bro. That's dope. Yeah. Also, I met a a dude. He does videography. You know what I'm saying? He good with that. That shit hard. Like, he fire. And, like, dude just walked up to me and asked for my Instagram. He said he wanted to work. So, it's real humble cat. So, I'm going to go ahead and work with him. He uh he just did something for FAMU, like, mm. months ago. So, uh, I'm just in with the right people, bro. Exactly. It's all about networking, all man. Do, we be telling niggas it's all about networking. Niggas don't want to network, but you know, you doing your thing, you you stomping them feet, you know what I mean? You getting out there, you doing what you gotta do to get progression in uh your field. So definitely, you know, you got our support, definitely. You already know that. So uh before we get up out of here, go ahead and get your plugs in. Where can they find you at, bro? And you can find me on the gram, you can find me on Twitter as underrated visuals. And you can find me on Facebook as Daryl Rogers Jr. So you already know where to look me up at. And if you need some pictures, I'm your guy. You know what I'm saying? Just hit me up, bro. Definitely. Prices is price going up, though. Oh, no, exactly. Definitely. Exactly. Has to. Has uh, I to. Just, lady, just had a lady yesterday. She she asked me to do a birthday party. I told her my price. She said, baby, you you need to charge more. I You need to charge up to 400 Whew. I say See, that's how it be. Once you once your shit once your shit start getting recognized and stuff, that's what happened. Price gotta go up, bro. You yeah, gotta, she said, got, to. got to. Kenny know. Kenny already know. But go ahead, Kenny. Go ahead and get the plugs in so we can get up out of here. Hey man, of course. I'm your boy Kenny Supreme. You can follow me on all social medias at Kenny underscore Supreme with two E's. And the YouTube is who is Kenny Supreme. We got media, artwork, logos, etc. Y'all make sure y'all get that. And then Londo. Oh, yeah. And before, not to cut you off, CJ, my bad. And I got a, a new episode of the pod dropping tonight, episode 30 of the KOE Confidential. And it's about Nipsey Hussle and Eric Holder. Yes, dude, sir. Dude. And then um, Londo, you, you, you're you not going to. Yep. No more stencil artists, niggas. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga. Stop all no that more tracing, y'all niggas. Dudes. No more of y'all niggas that want to be Joe Budden. Y'all niggas ain't us. Sit your ass in the crystal shop. If a nigga oh. hate it, call him Joe Buddy. Man, that's what the motherfuckers is doing over there. Nigga said, stop good. tracing. I don't, they, I don't know what they got going on, dog. For who took them pictures, man? Man, we'll talk about that on camera. Anyways, um, man, free like, perp, man, free perp game. You feel me? Oh, you got a chance. <laughs> This thing gonna get us killed. All right, Lando stuff. Lando shit should be the um either it probably was popping up in that moment or it's popping up now. It's probably still going, but it's there. Uh, follow men's and of course follow me trapped underscore bambino on. You don't make us out the feds, man. Up Instagram and Twitter. CJ Rush on Facebook. Don't follow. Don't follow Erica by don't. 
up. All right. And then go ahead and follow all of the uh Trash no more TV sketch stuff. artists. All uh, right, I'm not doing this with y'all. Follow Trash House TV, everything. Y'all know we all do. that candle burning sage light shit. Don't follow her. Talk that don't mean shit. shit Talk she, your shit she got nothing but hay in her heart. All right, all right. Talk your shit with trap. I'm cutting all this out. Talk your shit with trap. Um Everything's just too fucking sweet. Y'all know what it is. Daryl, we appreciate you. you got hay in your Lando, heart. You need hell. to get some self-reflection, man. You need to do, just get some therapy, dog. Must close the in the veil of their lives. It's a change in my mind. I guess it's changing my eyes. Yes, it's changing my eyes.